consider myself to be a bit of a context fanatic. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's what comes with the, when we have a coaching session, you know, what are your best hopes for this, the next 20 minutes? Or what are your best hopes for the next two days? Or what are your best hopes? If that's not clear, and if you're working in a consultant way, then um, the best hopes are from the contractor, from uh, the ones you're working with based on the contract. It goes the whole way around. And it's so important to say, this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about this. There's no room for that. That's another setting. But we're talking about this. And within this, what are your best hopes? So since we're going into one team, it's not your decision. You're actually against it, but this is how it's going to be. What are your best hopes for this one team? Welcome. Uh, I prepared some slides, uh, which I find pretty cool. So you have to think that too. Um, thank you for this uh, team case. Uh, I got this assignment uh, once ago. And yeah, I'm going to tell about it. Uh, I did this uh, best team ever in brackets, and I will explain how. Just before, for the few of you who don't know me, I think most of you know me, my name is Jesper. Uh, I'm living in Switzerland and also I'm from Denmark and living and working in Denmark as well. Uh, One, a colleague of mine once said I'm suffering from SOS uh, shiny object syndrome because uh, I get quite excited sometimes and I throw over all sort of projects and sometimes I hate myself for it and other times I find it really inspiring for myself. So I'm a coach and a trainer. I'm running a solution service in Denmark. I do a solution focused coach training in Danish and I work for a solution service as well uh, in the English version sometimes. I'm a cons- uh, consultant, next to that, a traditional consultant uh, in a solution focused way, of course. Um, uh, one of my projects was this the Minute Dice. It's a free coaching app you can download uh, with solution focused questions. In case you don't have a coach next to you, you can uh, live with that and it will ask you some questions and hopefully help you. Uh, I do some uh, work with uh, small companies as well, entrepreneurship under the name of Edgeware, Creative Entrepreneurship. That's uh, Australian actually, where I do the European version. And then I'm a board member and a uh, community builder. I don't know how much community builder I am in the soul world. I'm for the mailing list that you do uh usually i just passively sit and watch what people write on the list i don't know how much community building that is actually um i would like you to introduce you to a case i had where we're working with a team uh, two teams who had to be merged into one uh, and how i discovered a model uh, i call it a conversational landscape matrix that was really helpful for me to working with this deeply in conflict team, two teams. And uh, then otherwise, how I managed to do this process. I got this uh, assignment. Um, There were two uh, high performing teams that had to be uh, merged into one well functioning. It had been tried before, some years before my time. And it ended in a catastrophe. They were all, both teams, they actually threatened with uh, just uh, quitting the job. And the top management decided, okay, we leave this team um, in two teams as they are because they were high qualified people. So they didn't want to lose the competences instead. So actually the two teams just (laughs) ironically teamed up and threatened with just leaving the company in case they were had to merge. And they really hated each other. They were so, they were doing the same jobs uh, and uh, they had the same uh, assignments, but they really was so different as day and night, how they approached them. And they couldn't even communicate with each other without going into a conflict and accusing each other for whatever they could. 
But the top management, after a couple of years, they said, hey, it doesn't make sense to have these two teams. It would be more efficient to have one team. So they decided, said, listen, you have to be one team. So if you look at it from uh, my point of view, I got the job. I was asked by the manager for, from uh, the team leader from these two teams, said, I need to have uh, these two teams of five people merge into one. It doesn't make sense to have these two. I can give you uh, one day, which I negotiated into four hour, two times four hour meeting, two half days with one and a half months in between. That's what, what I got. You know, we have two teams in conflict for years. That's nothing. <laughs> My position was I've been the team coach for one of the teams. So I was in pretty good standing. They were working solution focused. I was working solution focused. We all love each other and it worked really fine. The team leader said, oh, couldn't you go to the other team and, and coach them for a couple of times so they get to know you? Maybe that could help. Um, I managed it once and then just said, get the hell out of here. What are you doing? We want, we need to address the problems. We need to figure out the cause of the problem. You're so sufficient. So they really didn't like me at all. Um, so I actually got this job. So I tried the one that didn't like me. I had the other team. Um, and they really loved the way I'm working. We had a really good uh, chemistry between each other. And the team leader said, from top management, they need to be one team, period. And if they all quit the job, that's it. That's the last chance. Can you help me? And of course, you can see from the workshop description, I was silly enough to say yes. You know, anyone with just some little brain would say, listen, I'm too much on the one side. I would never win the other one. But I did say yes to do this uh, because I took it as a challenge. What would you do in that case? How would you go about it? What did I do? I had to make the context clear. You know, top management has decided it will be one team. You cannot influence that. That's not for a discussion, no matter how much you hate it. You also have to be professionals, you know, uh, not absolutely best friends. You have signed a job contract. You have signed, uh, and there is a description of your job, what you have to deliver. In worst case scenario, you can leave your work and you can find work somewhere else if you want to, if you really don't want it. That's your decision. Well, but... Having signed that contract, you also have the right to be treated professionally in your work. And the more soft part of it, everybody has to, the right to have a good day at work. So what does that mean? And this what was my introduction to them and what I sketch. And I was thinking, how do I create a position for myself that I can work with these two teams. So I can, on the one hand, I have the one team that likes me. Uh, and the other hand, I have a team that probably would be very suspicious for whatever I do because I'm the other team's guy. So I probably have the agenda based on their wishes and not the other ones. Um, so I thought, well, how can I do? How can I create transparency? How can I create a way of showing a process that's really fair and equal to all? And ta-da! I looked at Hazen Moon's Dialogic Orientation Quadrant, which I also always say that the name, it's a, it's a test whether you're drunk or not. If you, can, if you can't pronounce it, you're probably drunk. Uh, her, um, her quadrant, uh, I looked at it, I just had, before I got this job, uh, just a couple of weeks before I was introduced to it, so I didn't know it that well, and I just look at it and I say, and it's actually a model usually used for teaching solution focus for practitioners so they know how they act and how I call it the dance between you and the client. Um, but I was thinking, hey, this is actually quite interesting. What if, 
So I started like this. Uh, when we started the, the team day, the first one, I said, listen, I'm your facilitator. Uh, I'm your team coach. And we're going to go uh, through this day together. And I, I talked about, uh, you know, you have to be one team. It's not for discussion. I would just say to you, uh, you have the right to be treated professionally in your work. Uh, you have the right to be here and be treated fairly and equally. And you also have the right to go to work with a good feeling. You know, you have that. So how do we talk about all these things? How do we, how do we talk about being one team? Uh, and I suggest this, and you have to accept it. Otherwise, uh, I don't think this will be a good day. So I said, listen, we have this, and I draw it on a flip chart. I said, listen, we, we have a, this work to do, and we can see it from different perspectives. We have a past. Uh, and as I know, it wasn't really that good past and everybody nodded. Yes, you bet your ass. It wasn't a good past. And we have a future. We have a wish from one, two teams to one. And nobody was nodding because they didn't like it. And I said, we can look at it from some other perspectives as well. We can look at it from a wanted and an unwanted perspective. So if we look it up the way we are going to talk with each other today i would like to divide into these four areas and all areas are welcome you are allowed to talk in whichever quadrant you want there's no limitations the first one is the attractive future how can we possibly imagine one team being the best way Despite our disagreement, despite everything, but how can we be one team in a way that you can wake up in the morning, go to work and say, yes, it's okay. Might not saying, wow, best team ever. I put that in bracket and I will explain that at the end. We can also talk about what have been working. What kind of experience do you have? Not necessarily from this workplace, but maybe you have earlier in your career or in your community. Are you doing football? Are you joining something? Where have you experienced good teams? What happened there? So I would be curious on that. And I very much like that we all put in our experience from that to try to help this attractive future, the good team. I know we have a troubled past. I know you have been through a lot, really. And you have been disagreeing. You have been stretching yourself incredibly. So this is an area of focus you might need to address as well. So you want to address. And they were all nodding, really. Yes, indeed, we will address. I remember when you were this big a-hole and all that. And I'm sure you can imagine in the future, all the things that could go wrong, because you know what has been gone wrong. So if we have these four quadrants, that's the areas we can focus on when we are together. And I also emphasize to say, listen, when I'm finished here, I'm going home, but you're staying and you have to continue. So the way I see I can make most value for you is if I focus on quarter one and quarter two, because we're not here forever. We don't see each other each day. I will go home and you will stay. So my thoughts about this is how can I be the most helpful for you? So please notice when I ask you questions, I'm not asking your questions to annoy you or to seek a conflict, I ask a question to, in the hope to help you focus on how would one team look like in the way that you can live with. That also means that when you go down in quadrant three and four and you talk about your experience, all the things that went wrong, all the people who did you wrong, and what you can imagine, how it will never work to be one team. I would like invite you to listen when you're talking with each other. Listen, how did you survive? 
when we're talking in quarter three, how did you survive? What did you learn from that? How did you get through? How did you manage? What helped you on the way? And when you can imagine, say, yeah, it's right. Yeah, we got to be one team. But no, I know it's going to be so dreadful. Then try to think about, hmm, what are the things that you experienced in quarter and three and how you managed to get through it? Could you use, should that happen in quarter and four? Should everything go really, really wrong? What could help you? And coping strategies, what have helped you before? What could help you in case it should go wrong? So I actually invited them and I said, of course, you can talk about the negative things if you want to. When I ask you questions, please just be aware that I'm up there and please help me when I'm facilitating this. If you're not clear about what I'm doing, ask me, yes, but where are you right now? Okay, so you want us to do this. You want us to talk about this. You want us to plan that. Where are you? Why are you doing this? Then please have this in mind, that this is what I try to do. If I'm not clear enough, interrupt me, ask me. If I'm on the wrong path, stop me. So that's what I did for transparency reasons and in try to win the other team that actually didn't like me. Um, and I also told them this one, say it's all about listen, selecting and building the classic into Kimberg. So we decide, I decide and you decide for what you will listen. Do you want to listen for opportunities in what could build uh, one team that could re be reasonable for you? Or are you listening for possible gaps and conflict areas or whatever? And do you want to talk about this? This is your choice. Because you are the experts. Again, I'm leaving. I'm not here after that. And you have to do all the hard work it takes. I'm here to try to support you and try to find the resources you can use for getting there. And there meaning what you want to define as there, the one team. So you have to be one team. You're all professionals. Uh, you have the right to be treated fairly, equally, and professional. So that was the context. So we shared the best hopes about one team. I put them in. And I said, now we are here. We are in the, it's a K1. That's uh, translated from Danish. So quadrant, if you want to know. The quadrant one, uh, how would it look like? One team. And in the beginning, I didn't dare to say best team ever. That was actually what they called themselves when I met them the second day. They said, we want to be the best team ever. But at this day, I was very carefully, I didn't dare. I was thinking they would kill me right away if I announced this best team ever because they were so cautious about each other. And sharing experience of good teamwork and what it means to be a good team in the quadrant two and other and we had this in between, one and a half months in between. So I invited them with the approval of the team leader to say, create small experience experiments in between the two meetings that can support this attractive future. Uh, and if there's a need to focus on the problems, then as I said, how did you manage? What helped you? What have you learned it? Which can be uh, used to create the new team. So they started talking. I put them in their own teams first and let them talk about uh, to feel safe. You know, So they talked about what is a good team and I encouraged them to say, speak not out of your experience from this workplace, but in your whole life. You can see your own family as a good team. You can see your sports community as a team or your hobby where you go fishing or whatever you do as a team. So where do you have good elements of a good team? What made it a good team? What happened there? And then mix them up. Again, pair them up with one from each time and just say, tell each other, what have you heard there? What are you taking out from this round? 
and talking about a good team. Don't judge each other. Just share it. And if you don't like what you hear, forget it. But just sharing it. What is a good team? And then saying, so if we should take the first small step, what could we do to approach that? And actually what happened here by showing them when they had talking about it, you know, the first small step and, and I mixed them again as well as I could. So from each team. So I said this experiments had to be your experiments, not other people experiments. What would you like to do to move towards a one team, what could you do? And they were saying, ah, okay, I know this guy from the other team is really, he's doing exactly the same assignments as I am doing, but we are completely disagreeing. I think I will take a huge step and invite him for a cup of coffee and just talk about what is he actually doing? That would be my contribution, but that must be enough. I said, sure, perfectly. One time in one and a half months, invite the person for a coffee and just talk about how do they approach their assignments, their, their daily work. And the other ones was just like, uh, I want to show my work and get inspiration from the other persons. Um, they decided that they will have a common team meeting once a week uh, and just tell each other what they're doing, nothing else, no discussion, no nothing, but just telling. So the, the one team knew what the other team were, uh, was doing. And all of these small experiments. And I made the rule that each person should come up with one experiment uh, and try it out and then see what happens. And they were not allowed to be oh, alone. They had to have a support. They have to have one other team member. They could choose freely. So someone, and I said, you need to meet up regularly. And you uh, always have to start with one specific question. And that is, what's better? Before whatever the experiment is, whatever, and uh, just be aware you might not have done it uh, yet, but then you have at least been thinking about it. So what's better? So you are not sitting alone with your own experiment. You have a partner and this partner responsibility is to asking what's better and then you can just discuss whatever you want to discuss and let it go so with this what actually happened was they started talking and i mixed them up in groups on the go starting with their own teams and let them talk about what they're doing and then slowly starting to integrate them and mix them up. Uh, so they got more and more curious. And what I hear, it was a small, you know, it was 10 people. So I could actually be there and listen into the discussions. And when they were talking, yeah, how could a good team be like, yeah. But I remember when she did that and I said, oh, we're down in the quarter three. Should we be there? Oh, he said we shouldn't be there. Oh, he actually said that we could be there, but that was these conditions. So they started actually to take, and I was thinking, yes, it works. It goddamn works. Because I just put the flip chart up and I made it visible for all of them. And I just said, we are, where are we? And each time I did some instructions, I said, now we are here. Now we are in the quadrant one. Now we are in the quadrant two. What are your experience with a good team? Okay, so the next round. So how does this experience support you in the quadrant one? Uh, one team what kind of ideas do you have for experiments what kind of things would you like to try out alone what involve other people in and whatever so they did that they came up with a lot of experiments they presented it for each other say i want to try this one out and that was really small the only thing where i interfered it was really saying are you sure that no matter how busy you are in your daily work life you will manage to do this. That's a condition. It has to be no matter how stressed out you are, you will still be able to do it. If you are in doubt, find another experiment. Find something easier, smaller. It's about gaining experiment, uh, experience in what's working. 
And again, when you're talking with each other and when you're down there, and maybe you have a very good reason to talk about what's not working because you have such good experience in conflicts and in what's not working, in being angry and being hurt, help each other because there's a valuable resource there. Because you're sitting here in front of me. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but you're not dead. You're actually alive and you're still here. How did you manage? And how can that be useful in the future to make sure we get up in the quadrant one and be one team? Because since you're sitting here, I assume you're not thinking about changing your job or leaving this team. You actually want to be here. So that was that. One and a half months later, I met them. Um, my first question, of course, is what's better? Uh, low practical, I made a timeline on a big table uh, and I put uh, a ball of chocolate. And it was the date where we met the first time and the date where we met the other time. And I said, okay, so each chocolate represents a success story. So who wants to start? So you have to put the chocolate on the timeline approximately where it happened. Then you have to tell a story. Then you get to eat the chocolate. And if you find this very important success story, you can leave the chocolate on the timeline and take an extra chocolate and eat that. So they started telling stories about yeah, we started having these team meetings where we were together and the first two team meetings, we only told what we were doing. We didn't discuss anything. And we were realizing, hey, we're doing the same things. And then we started actually bringing in cases where that was a little bit difficult. And the other one started giving feedback on that. And hey, the other ones are actually quite good in what they're doing. So we could use them. And there were especially two who have a very deep, serious conflict with each other for each team, where the one has said this one, I will take a huge step. I will go and invite the other one for a cup of coffee and just sit down and talk about what we're doing. And in this one and a half months, they changed from being each other's, uh, I don't know what you call it, mentor or sparring partner or whatever. So they actually said, yeah, we started actually presenting what we're doing to each other. And giving each other input because we're actually on the same level professionally. And okay, we have different approaches to the things, but uh, we learn a lot from each other. So creating this curiosity for each other and figuring out uh, and the team leader could stand uh, on the side and say, this is what I've told all the time. You know, you're equally good, use each other. But they didn't, there was so blinded by all these negative experience with each other and where they rushed into discussions and conflicts. So these small steps with, uh, with just trying out, reaching out, saying, okay, I'm going to drink a cup of coffee to, with you. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to take anything away. We're we just drinking. I show my willingness and then starting talking. And then again, figuring out, Hey, you're not that bad. Okay. You actually have something to offer to me okay, maybe we should start talking with each other. And that was actually at the end of the second half day I had with them, that they said, okay, we don't want to be one team. We want to be the best team ever in this organization. And that was where I left them. They started the second day with new experiments, uh, bigger experiments. They wanted more things. They wanted more exchange. They wanted to have a structure in the work where they exchanged the experience about what they were working with. They wanted a more structured approach to all the difficulties they had in the jobs uh, so they could discuss them and it's, uh, get inputs from the other ones. Um, and I thought, hey, okay, that's my time to get the hell out of there and leave them alone. And that was at the end where they said, nah, we don't want to be one team. We're going to show the rest of this organization we are the best team ever. And that's it. 
you know, often we work wow. also, also uh, we work as uh, solution focused consultants. Uh, I have a lot of these short interference and I actually don't have any idea of what it happened, but I felt quite confident, you know, probably some will find another job and they will go and but they have this shot into a realizing, looking at each other and seeing each other. So I found this, uh, this was, uh, for my way, a complete experiment. I mean, I, I was thinking about it before when I said yes. I said, how stupid can you be? How silly can you be to say yes to this? The one half of the team would never, ever trust you because you're good friends with the other ones. So how do you go about with this position? And I found out that this using the dialogic orientation quadrant, or I, I call it a, a conversational landscape, and showing it to people and telling them, this is what I want. This is what I'm trying to. And if you don't get it, uh, if it's unclear to you, please stop me and just ask, hey, yes, but where are you right now? What are you doing with what you're doing? And then I will try to explain you where I am and why I'm there. So especially in non-functioning teams, I find it brilliant to use it that way. For me as a facilitator, to make it legit, to ask questions, and also actually to give the responsibility to the team, to say, hey, listen, I'm doing my best in this work, but you are the ones who have to do the hard work. So let's get the best out of it. We yes, still have I... Yeah. Something? Um, yes. Just supporting that, I had a team as well, and I introduced it as well. Just instead of the wanted and unwanted, I had just positive and negative. Mm -hmm. And then they realized where the team was, and they had no clue about how the quadrant one was looking at. But they, it was easy for them to do the step from quadrant three to quadrant two, and then maybe for, uh, move from quadrant two to quadrant one, because otherwise it's too huge. Yeah. And it, the funny enough, they decided then in the workshop what they want to do and working on. I left them two months by themselves. And uh, when I kicked in, uh, where are you now and what you have reached? I was so surprised and blown away what they have done and what they're going to do without anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what happened, but somehow <laughs> this just this visualization is very yes. useful. And I really encourage um, the people I'm supporting in mm. using it. Maybe that's useful and helpful. And what I experience sometimes as a solution-focused facilitator is that uh, people say, yeah, right, now we got this happy-go-lucky, silly, positive guy, and we just talk about what's working, we're not talking about. But this deliberately actually is saying it's fully okay to talk about problems, but please get something good out of it. You know, so when you're talking about problems, when you're talking about all the things that's not working, when you're talking about all the people who are to blame, how did you manage to stay in it? You know, look at it, praise yourself. It's hard work. Damn, you are sitting here because you really want to do this work. I mean, probably you love your work or you have a professionality that you really love, you know, say, I am doing this. Um, so what helped you? What kind of resources do you have in you that makes you stay here and survive it? And how can you use that constructively? Um, what impressed me most and what I learned most uh, out of your presentation, and thank you very much for that, Jesper, is uh, how, and, and I think one colleague uh, wrote it in a chat, as how you really set the scene um, first of all, I really admire your relaxed attitude. I think I would have been much more worried about how <laughs> I win them over. And, and secondly, um, this clear statement of un under what the foundation, the conditions are. You, you have mm. to become one team, but you have a right and so on. I mm. think this is most impressive because very often this is missing. I mean, this is the support mm. we need from the ones that give us the mission. 
Uh, and when you are able to do that and then do it so clearly and so quietly as you did it, I think that's a, a wonderful wakening up and and also taking them very seriously in in who they are when they are working mm. with you. Um, mm. That is, I think, um, amazing how you did that. So my compliments. And I think if I may add, add to that, uh, Oh, yes, I'm so brilliant. No, no that's <laughs> uh, not what I mean. I just, thought, I no, just no, no, said I but, learned something from yes, you. Yes, yes, good. yes. I'm just making a joke, sorry. But that's, yeah. the, that's the way I am. <laughs> um, no, but, but what, what I am consider myself to be a bit of a context fanatic. And, and I think that's what comes with the, when we have a coaching session. You know, what are your best hopes for this the next 20 minutes? Or what are your best hopes for the next two days? Or what are your best hopes? If that's not clear... And if you're working in a consultant way, then uh, the best hopes are from the contractor, from uh, the ones you're working with based on the contract. It goes the whole way around. And it's so important to say, this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about this. There's no room for that. That's another setting. But we're talking about this. And within this, what are your best hopes? So since we're going into one team, this is not your decision. You're actually against it, but this is how it's going to be. What are your best hopes for this one team? I mean, if it's okay, Jesper, to kind of further elaborate on what really impressed me uh, by listening into your story is how you turn this whole thing of them being the victims of somebody else's decision into a process where they are fully owning what they are doing and how they are going to do differently. So yeah. suddenly empowering them and giving them, yeah, all the, all the opportunities and showing them that they are not the victims of this process, but they are the ones shaping their own future there. Yeah. Within these mm. boundaries that are set. Yeah. Yeah. Masterpiece. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, maybe if, uh, maybe shortly. Uh, what I also really admired is because she said at, at the end, I'm a, a, a context fanatic, uh, creating conversational landscape and so on. Um, that, that's that's uh, noticeable in, in, in the whole work you did. And, and that's so great to, to notice. Uh, everything you do is about being a context fanatic and creating converse, conversational landscape. That's what I wrote in the chat, that, that's your simplicity between brackets, but it's so mm. powerful. Uh, really great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. And I think just helping people have the awareness of where are they in what they're talking about makes the whole difference. That they themselves have this awareness. Now I'm here. Now I'm here. Okay. Do I want to be here? Usually people don't want to be in the court in three and four. No, they want to be in one and two. And this by acknowledging it's fully okay to have bad experience. It's fully okay to be scared of being hurt again. So how do we go about with it? And how do we get up where we want to be?